afternoon. For the next 20 minutes or so, I want to talk about a subject that God has placed in my heart that uh, they need to, need to be addressed. Uh, the title of my uh, message is going to be Battleground or Playground. Battleground or Playground. Have we come to a place, some of us as Christians, that we are blinded and we cannot see how the enemy is mounting up casualties, how the people are being destroyed, lives are being taken early, the sicknesses, the, the wars and everything that's around us. Have we become so blind and counter-minded not to realize that we are in a war? that we are in spiritual warfare. If you belong to Jesus Christ, yet then you are in a war. If you don't belong to Jesus Christ and you belong to the enemy, you're still in a war. There's a war between two forces. Forces of evil, which is the devil, and the forces of righteousness, which is God. Now, In Ephesians 6 and 12, we kind of talk about a little bit about the weapons that we have at our disposal. Okay? Now, let's talk about perhaps one of the one one of the tricks of the enemy. First of all, Satan wants the, even the believer to be really relaxed in believing that he doesn't really exist. He wants to believe, even the believer and the unbeliever, to believe that, that he doesn't exist and he is not a threat to us. So how can he go about doing this? How can Satan go about deceiving us and we become so blind and not realize that we are in a battle. But we choose to play. Instead of getting more familiar with the tactics of the enemy, we choose to gravitate to the world and we become we become sort of uh, comfortable with what the world has to offer. We, re we replace studying the word and praying with uh, a fascination for what's going on in, say, what's going on in Hollywood. Uh, we know more about the people who, the we, we're more concerned about the academy, uh, uh, the awards. Uh, we're, more, we're more concerned about worldly issues than we are about the things of God. And in the midst of that, it's just like disarming ourselves. Many of our believers are just into themselves. That all that matters is if it pleases itself, that's what they want to do. That's it. And so the enemy would give you all of the things you want to play with. A lot of things to play with occupy your time and make you think that, you know what, we're in a playground. It's not so bad. This is why we often wonder, with all of the dangerous things that are happening, how come the believer plays so much? Why are so many believers so counter-minded? Why? Why are families being sick and can just come in and destroy homes? Why can you just come in and just wreck a church? 
Why can you just come in and just destroy children? Why? When believers are supposed to have this power, okay, this authority that God has given us. Now here we look at in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, says, For we walk in the flesh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Now, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down, mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. Now, so if our weapons of warfare are not carnal, if our weapons are not carnal, And instead of learning to, to learning how to uh, apply our weapons, and our weapons are carnal, and the enemy is constantly defeating us, then we must be carnal. Carnal people love to play. Carnal people have very little time for the word of God. Carnal people love that. Carnal preachers love to be seen by the world. Why is it that there's so many preachers that are receiving rewards from the world? Accolades from the world. Why all of a sudden the world want to give all these accolades to pastors and preachers and teachers? All, all these things. Why all of a sudden? Perhaps it's, it's a trap. Perhaps it's a trap. Perhaps it is a trap to get the preacher into believing that they have gained a friend. And getting the preacher to believe they have gained a friend, the preacher began to compromise. Later on, I'm, I'm going to talk about the cross. The cross that they, they that, that the Preachers have been slowly but surely removing from the church. I want to get back with that in a few minutes. But I'm going to ask this question again. Are we as believers, are we, in a, are we on a battlefield or are we on a playground? Because if we think we're on a playground, we're going to get killed. We're going to get defeated. The children, you, everything. Because the enemy has one, only one, and one only, and that is to destroy. 1 John 3 and 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The preacher, the teacher, the Christian, the believer is supposed to all be in the business of taking their part to help to expose and destroy the work of the devil. And when a preacher or a teacher or a believer comes to a point that they realize it is best for them to be quiet about sin, be quiet about the truth, and be, and, and be passive instead of speaking the truth, there's a problem. There's an issue there. Serious issues. Why can't you get preachers to talk about abortion issues? Why can't you get preachers to talk about homosexuality? Why can't you get them to talk about things of that nature? Why all of a sudden people want to be so quiet? Why is it that they want to take the cross out of the church? Because is it to please the sodomites? So when the Solomites come into church, and they won't be offended by the cross. So let's make the church look like anything except the church. And we're going to please the people that come in. And, and, and we won't even mention sin. But if you don't mention sin, then how does the individual get the opportunity to go out differently than it came in? Are we on a battlefield? Our playground. 
We have responsibility to expose the devil. We have responsibility as believers to, to find out, to study, to understand the tactics of the enemy so that we will be able to defeat the enemy. So the enemy won't be able to destroy our children. The enemy won't be able to destroy us. The enemy won't be able to take away everything we have. We have responsibility to study. We must be aware that spiritual battle is always going on. Spiritual warfare is constantly going on. Spiritual warfare is taking place as we sleep. All on the clock, there's spiritual warfare. And we have, we have to understand that we have enemies. The devil is our chief enemy, but he got workers. He got witches. He got wizards. He have soothsayers, fortune tellers, Satanists, all different kind of cults out there, and they all are in cahoot with the devil to destroy the people of God. But we're playing. We like to have fun. We're more interested in, 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 in who's going to win the Grammy than we are about people being destroyed. Preachers more interested in getting more accolades, getting more, 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 more titles than they are about souls being saved. The churches have become a self-centered, uh, uh, self-centered self people. Look at me. Look at what I got. Look at what I accomplished. I've been preaching for 15 years, 20 years, or whatever. Is that what's more important? What about responsibility to destroy the works of the enemy? We must know the enemy. We must be aware of what's in our neighborhoods. We must be aware that in our neighborhoods, we must be aware of, of cults, witches, wizards, soothsayers, Satanists fortune tellers, and other wor evil workers that are aiding the devil's agenda. And we must expose it. We must have a very high, strong prayer life. Prayer determines victory versus defeat. We must learn to recognize, we must learn not to put man in such a high, not to put man in such high esteem. You've got to be, you have to be the kind of person these days. You have to be able to call it what it is. When a man of God gets up there and begins to preach, and he begins to def defend sin, and trying to minimize the effect of sin, you have to be able to recognize when the, even the man of God is, is compromising the word of God. And you must be able to recognize it and not receive it. If it was sin last year, it's sin now. We must call sin what it is, sin. We don't want to offend people. Forget about it. Offend somebody. You get offended every day. People offend us every day. They, they, they nasty mouth. They, 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 they say things about Jesus Christ. They just, they just use his name all kind of way. And guess what? They're not, they're not, they don't care if you're offended. But they tell you, if you, if you say Jesus, they're offended. If you wear a cross, they're offended. Why would anyone be offended by you wearing a cross? Why would people be offended by that cross in the church? I'm going to hit that in a minute. We must call sin, sin. Stop playing. We play too much. The church play too much. We have too many events. All kind of events. We think events and not... We got events all during the year. Big old calendars. Nice calendars, right? But what is that doing for society? What is that doing for the people of God? What is that doing for married people? What are, that, what are that doing for children? What are that doing? 
While this battle is going on, fun, fun, fun. Make it fun for the kids. Make it fun for the teachers. Make it fun for the preachers. Make it all fun while the devil continue to slaughter. We must come to understand that we are not on a playground, but we are on a battleground. And the stakes are very high, not low. We need to wake up, preachers, teachers, Christian brothers and sisters. We need to wake up and stop being so occupied with having fun. We need to tell the truth. We need to tell the kids it's not, it's not, it's, it's sin to have babies when you're not married. Why? But we don't tell them they'll keep on doing it. You might do it one time, but we tell that young lady, you know, God, you know, that's not, that's, that's, that's sin. That, that's, the Bible called it sin. Not to condemn people, but let people know that you, you messed up, you ask God to forgive you, God will forgive you, but don't let tell people that it's okay just to walk in your sin. They got to know the truth. I'll never change. We don't want to offend people. But we're watching people go to hell. We don't want to tell people that if you don't get saved, you're going to be lost. But the truth is, the Romans, 8, Romans 6, 23 said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That scripture is not going to change for the preacher, for the teacher, and anybody else. And I don't care if it's not going to, not going to change. And homosexuality is a work of the flesh. It's a work of the flesh. It's a slap in the face to, to God. But people are afraid to, to, to tell the truth. People are wondering, why is my pastor so quiet? Does anybody speak the truth anymore? Does anybody, does any man, does any... And any man wear pants anymore? People wear pants telling the truth anymore? Why are people so afraid to speak the truth? The cross. What happened on the cross? Why do people want, why are there some people who, who push, who, they've been pushing and pushing to take the cross out of the churches? To plead the Sodomites. To, to please those that want to be able to come in church and feel comfortable in church and not feel convicted by sin. But most important, the reason why they have a problem with the cross, let me get to that right now. The cross. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says, For the preaching of the cross, first again, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. They perish, they, 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 in other words, they reject what Jesus did on the cross. And so they continue to perish, they continue to die in their sin, and this is what the scripture is talking about. But unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross is the power of God. The name of Jesus is the power of God. Okay? The blood of Jesus is the power of God. And so all of these, the enemy want to take all of these away from our vocabulary. People get offended if they come to church and they're crossing the church. But here's the truth about the whole thing. Here's the truth about the whole thing, preacher. Wake up. Stop being silly. The truth about the whole thing about the cross is the cross is the reminder of what Jesus did for the believer. And the cross is a reminder how Jesus whipped the devil on that day. This is why there's such a push to remove the cross. And some of your preachers you are giving into it. You are literally compromising with the world. But now, let's talk about 
the, 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 let's talk about the flock, the people. Let's talk about how we love to play. How people want things in the church to be so comfortable for them. How they want church people want to be able to, they want to be able to, they want to feel a part of Jesus, but they also want to hold on to the world. They want to preach in the pulpit, but they also want to go to the clubs. They want to preach in the pulpit, but they also want to go to Beyonce concert. They want to preach in the pulpit, but they also love the praise of man. Now, I'm going to read three more scriptures. St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. It's in Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. You're going to call it St. Matthew. You're going to call, call that. That's a different one. Lord help me. St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. Say, but when the Pharisees heard it. What did the Pharisees hear? The Pharisees heard of what Jesus was doing. Casting out devils. How the power of God was moving, and the devils had no choice but to come out. They had a problem with that. The Pharisees had a problem with that. So, the Pharisees being Pharisees, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. They made a very terrible accusation, they made a foolish statement. And the truth of Jesus. But we understand the devil is the, is the father of lies and he is an accuser of the brethren. That's one of his titles. Now, first, says Matthew verse 20, verse 12, verse 25 says, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said, Every kingdom that divided itself is brought to desolation, and every city. A house divided against itself shall not stand. And he goes down to verse 26, and Jesus still speaking, and says, in verse 26, Hey, if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 27. And if Beelzebub cast out devils, but if Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore shall be your judges. But, and Jesus said in verse 20, uh, St. Matthew 12, 20, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Satan does not want the children of God to be powerful. He does not want the children of God to tap into the power that God gives them. He doesn't want them to understand that you can cast out devils. He doesn't want them to understand that you can have the victory. He doesn't want them to understand those things. He, what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to play. He wants you to go after the things of the world. He wants you to play. He wants you to get in a play mode so he can come in on a day when you least suspect it and knock you out. That's what the devil wants. So, how does he do it? Convincing the people of God that this is a time to play, not a time to fast. A time to play, not a time to pray. A time to play, not a time to talk to God. A time to watch TV, watch the Grammys, watch all these sick uh, soap operas on TV. A time to do all that but not a time to talk to God. Why? Because the devil don't want you to be powerful. He wants you to be weak and feeble. And a great tactic is to get the people of God to play. Now, I have one more to read here. We go down to Exodus, Exodus chapter 32, verse 6. This kind of sums it up. Moses that went down, apparently Moses went to the mountains, all right, and with having a dialogue with, with God and writing the Ten Commandments and everything that happened up there. And the 32nd verse, in the 32nd chapter, verse 6, apparently the people got restless while Moses was gone. They began to murmur and talk among themselves. 
And Exodus 32, 6 said, And the people rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering and brought peace offering. And the people sat down to eat, drink, and they rolled up the plate. So they eat, drink, and they rolled up the plate. They rolled up the plate. And when the people of God rolled rise up the plate, we get in trouble. When we when we spend most so much time pleading the flesh, we get in trouble. We get sidetracked. When we get sidetracked, the enemy sees us, he gets opportunity to come in and he hits us and he attacks us. He catches us without our armor. Exodus 32 and 7. And the Lord said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, for thy people which 